fourth talk now of our afternoon session is from Eugene at Saraston and from University thank College you. London. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah, thank you. Uh, this talk is going to be titled DNA Condensate uh, DNA Condensation into Thoroids, Hollow by uh, Concave Discoids, and Hollow Spheroids. So over to you, Eugene. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, first, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, this opportunity to give this virtual talk. Um, I will start my presentation with a brief exposition of uh, the semi-flexible polymer, for example, DNA. DNA is an example of semi-flexible polymer um, of the problem of condensation of uh, such things. Then I describe the model that AMS my model that aims at a universal description of the condensate global shapes. Next, I present the result of uh, numerical computation um, of morphological variation, a variation of the shapes uh, of the globals. And uh, uh, finally, I conclude my talk by uh, listing some important items, uh, some important points that are pertinent to this uh, theoretical analysis. Uh, it has been known since uh, the 60s that the double-stranded DNA, like uh, other semi-flexible polymer chains, uh, may condense uh, in highly compact structures. Uh, the globulus may be formed by a um, few or even by a single molecule. The condensation, uh, this condensation may be induced by uh, different uh, condensing agents, for example, by multiple indications. Uh, the shape of the structures is the result of uh, the balance or compromise between the cost of the elastic energy, uh, it could be bending or even twisting or something else, elastic energy of the molecule and the energy of the, uh, interaction between uh, uh, double-stranded DNA inside the global and uh, the surface energy. So an interaction of the DNA with the environment. Uh, toroidal globals like here, this is toroid and donut shape. Uh, they were first observed on electron micrographs uh, more than 50 years ago on the electron micrographs of a disrupted uh, heads of the bacteria FH T2. So uh, the first paper, as far as I understand, uh, as far as I know, was published in 19, back in 1967 by Klimenko. Uh, since uh, then, uh, so these steroid, DNA steroids attracted, have attracted much attention of both uh, the theoretician and the experimentalists. Uh, depending on the length of the polymer, the relative, uh, relative strengths of the surface tension and the stiffness of the DNA, so elasticity of DNA, the, uh, the toroids may vary in sizes and uh, uh, also uh, they're, they're called toroids, they're not tori, so not uh, even approximately, well, approximately they're tori, but not exactly. And this is an interesting point. Uh, so the, the packing, uh, inside the toroids in these condensates is uh, highly ordered. It's practically uh, a pneumatic liquid crystal state. So uh, it's, but it's, 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 um, it's just formed by a single molecule. Just, this is an amazing thing actually. And uh, um, toroids are common. So the, there are other condensates like rod-like, but toroid, the toroid, DNA toroids are common. The sizes can be can differ. So the sizes depend on the solution uh, condition, also on condensing engines and other parameters. So the size, typical size, uh, few ten or few hundred nanometers. Um, uh, there are, now there exist many experimental evidences uh, that show nearly perfect uh, hexane letter packing, uh, letter arrangement of the filaments inside, filament, filament means DNA, double-stranded DNA inside the toroid. Like here, for example, so you see on the cross-section, high-ordered structure. 
this is a simulation. So it shows the um, regions like here, where the, uh, this is real picture. So where the um, <clears throat> DNAs are highly ordered and uh, other regions where it's, it's not clear what's, what's happening there. Uh, okay, so uh, the big uh, puzzle is uh, still exists now. So what is the actual arrangement of the DNA uh, strand inside the toroid? Uh, there exist many um, many approaches, experimental or uh, simulation-like approaches, uh, like like this recently pu uh, published paper, for example, published this year. Um, uh, so they, they speculate that uh, the optimal packing um, must be uh, twisted through it, like, like uh, here in this simulation. And uh, actually it's not clear where it's twisted because the, the twisting thyroid provides the most compact uh, configuration or it's twisted because of um, chirality of interaction of a dubstein DNA between themselves, because as everybody knows, the uh, dubstein DNA is chiral molecule. So it means that interaction between two um, <clears throat> dubstein DNA also chiral. Uh, these authors, by the way, they claim that um, this chirality plays no role in, in the, um, in the uh, formation of this twisted terror. Okay. So this is just uh, to introduce you in the context. And uh, um, uh, in back in 1996, uh, uh, Abing uh, and uh, Dyke um, proposed a simple theory uh, showing how this deformation of steroids uh, uh, can occur. Uh, so they assume that the arrangement of the um, DNA in the thyroid is a so-called coaxial spool model. So it means that we have layers uh, of DNA that uh, go around the, um, the axis. Axis somewhere here, so you see there's just one quarter of the cross-section of the thyroid. And if we are here, so there is one parameter family. So if we are here that we have a nearly perfect tori, and when this parameter varies, so it means that uh, um, the surface energy prevails, then the, uh, the uh, global becomes more compact and uh, uh, it's flattened to one side. And there is a, so the channel in the, in the, um, the near the axis, of course. So the, you, you can, in, in this model, you, uh, the DNA cannot come to the axis because it's um, to, uh, it costs a lot. So the, the curvature, so the model penalizes the bending curvature and the curvature depends on this radius. The radius. So this model then, um, other authors, authors uh, they uh, improve this model. Uh, but uh, still, um, it seems that it doesn't describe um, the, the full variety of all configuration that we can observe. For example, here we see the thyroids inside the bacteriophage uh, capsid, and depending on the condensing agent, so the thyroid, this thyroid, and this thyroid, they, they can have different cross sections. Uh, neither of the existing models describe the uh, thyroidal cross section, uh, which is uh, non, uh, which is um, concave like here. Of course, situation is here is different because so we have the wall. So there is also, uh, we have to account for um, different uh, interaction of um, the surface of the thyroid with the wall. So it differs from this interaction with the environment in the uh, core of the capsid. Nevertheless, it's interesting that uh, such shape, shapes can exist. But thyroids are not only 
the shapes uh, that have been observed. Here, the example of uh, so-called uh, spherical uh, global, which is not a toroid, so there is no hole. We don't know actually what is in the uh, in the core in the center, but still, so there are several papers they describe um, spheroidal, how to say spherical or globular um, uh, configurations of condensate. That's another fact. So um, I'm going to present a model that actually uh, pretends to be more universal that uh, describe both shapes, toroidal, different toroidal shapes, and also um, spheroidal shapes, and uh, which can show the uh, variation of the shape depending on the parameter. Okay, now uh, I'm going to describe the model is, is in, in more detail. So we consider semi-flexible polymer DNA. Uh, of length L, which is immersed in pure solvent. Uh, and uh, um, I want to find the shape of the global that is made of this uh, polymer of uh, some fixed thickness. And uh, uh, this shape must minimize the bending energy um, and the surface energy. And we have a constraint of constant volume with effect of fixed scale. And also it's assumed it's important. Uh, we assume that um, the uh, contrary to what Abink and Odaig did. So I assume that there is a concentric spool. So it means that, so the strands go around the uh, center of the sphere. Then the density is constant. Okay, so probably uh, there are several papers that describe uh, density, uh, they discuss density and density probably not constant, but in this model, so uh, I have no better choice as to start with constant density. Um, so the concentric spool model, it's not my, uh, 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 the, the things that I just invented. So it exists in the literature and uh, uh, seriously discussed uh, in the description of DNA uh, formation, D DNA uh, packing in the um, capsids. Okay, so this is the uh, cross-section uh, of the toroid. And I introduced the polar coordinates from the uh, uh, axis of rotation R uh, to the contour uh, curve of the cross-section. So I just consider one quarter because of the symmetry, starting from this point to this point. So I have the two coordinates describing this curve, uh, the contour uh, R is theta. And uh, uh, important thing, so this is condition of, um, for the um, concentric uh, spool model, that if um, I have a point that belongs to uh, the condensate that the whole arc should be inside. So it's not possible that it go like that, no. Okay. Um, so next, um, I can compute the surface area and the volume of the toroid. Uh, and uh, so I present them as single integrals, assuming that um, my curve, my contour curve, is given as a theta function of r, of, of radius. And then I, I can compute the surface energy, which is just uh, area times gamma. And gamma um, is um, some coefficient that tells me, so the intensity of the polymer uh, solution interaction. And the bending energy for the uh, concentric spool model, it's simple, it's just integrate one over R squared. And uh, also I can perform uh, double integration and get this. So I have all components uh, to combine them and uh, uh, try to minimize the sum of the energies uh, under condition of the constant volume. So P is Lagrange multiplier where um, it's pressure actually. So I, I want to minimize this. Uh, 
So I count only for Benedict stiffness in principle. So you can ask about the twisting. Uh, well, there are papers they say, actually recent papers uh, that say that it's not so important, but in principle, it can be included. So it probably in future if necessary. Okay, now, so I just substitute these energies and um, the expression for the volume. And now I get this um, derivation problem. So the important are two coefficients, B is the uh, bending coefficient. It's proportional to uh, the um, persistent length of double-stranded DNA. And uh, P is the normalized pressure. Okay, next thing to do, of course, uh, to write out the Lagrange equation. I can do it in different uh, ways. I can, so technically it's um, convenient to describe my curve sometimes as theta function of R or um, R or function of theta or even so as a parametric curve. So here are two versions uh, and uh, boundary conditions. The boundary conditions as follows. So the contour curve must meet, meet each coordinate axis orthogonally. Of course, so if I have the one quarter of the torus, so it's clear that I, because of symmetry and to have a smooth uh, surface of the toroid, I have to come to the uh, horizontal plane orthogonally. But also um, if uh, uh, by chance, uh, my curve goes to the um, axis of symmetry. So again, it must come to this axis uh, at right angle. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I introduce a characteristic parameter. Actually, again, this is just a follow uh, Abeng, uh, Dyck and other authors. This is universal parameter. Uh, it's um, Meaning is that is basically it shows um, the strengths of the surface energy normalized by uh, bending stiffness, gamma over B sensor. And also the, the, the total energy is uh, normalized by this combination. Okay, so, and I solved this boundary value problem and uh, what I have now. So the solution, uh, let's start with this. So <clears throat> the color um, codes the value of eta. Uh, but I, I show you uh, a bit later uh, the exact values for eta, exact dependence of eta. But now, so just to understand it uh, qualitatively. Uh, so let's first look at the um, cross-section contour or, um, that uh, starts at ends at the horizontal axis. So here, when the bending stiffness is high, so it is small, then we have a perfect or nearly perfect uh, tori. But then when we have a stronger surface energy that the, the torus become fatter and fatter, and also it stopped being, well, well, the cross-section stopped being uh, convex, and there is some uh, sharpening of uh, this end and uh, of, 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 of this turn, and it approaches the, uh, the um, axis of symmetry, rotational axis of symmetry, and finally, uh, it makes uh, a cusp here. So the it stopped being smooth here. And it corresponds to the, um, so the internal chamber uh, becomes more and more spherical. So we come, oh, sorry. So we come to the shape, this big like uh, shape, this cusp here. Uh, it's for it about one half. And the now, the channel that uh, connects the internal um, volume of the Torre, uh, now, so it's disjoint from the uh, outer space. And uh, what we have, we have a discoid-like shape, which is a uh, big concave. So it's concave here and in the bottom. 
And then when we continue, so it's become, uh, uh, well, it's become more and more like a spheroid. So it becomes spheroid and finally uh, it becomes a ball, exact, uh, exact uh, hollow ball. So with some uh, spherical chamber. Um, so the, yeah, the layer becomes more and more uniform and finally, so it uh, becomes hollow ball. Hollow balls. What about the hollow balls? Yeah, there, there are solutions of my equations, with just uh, stationary solutions. So you see the uh, cross sections of the hollow balls, so the the corresponding, uh, the, the the the, I mean the uh, outer and inner uh, uh, contours. Uh, they are coded the same. Um, Okay, I can answer the question, uh, when, where the branch of the hollow balls connects with the branch of the uh, spheroids, so deformed balls. Uh, to this aim, uh, I consider a small perturbation of my stationary solution, delta, and then uh, I can uh, get from the other Algarish equation and get this uh, linear equation for del uh, delta with k is constant. And the solution of the last equation is uh, in this, where, so it, it is written in terms of uh, Lejeune functions um, of the first, second kind uh, with parameter nu. And it turns out that the only possibility when the, uh, this perturbation makes physical sense exists only for K minus six. So it's better uh, for B product BP equals A. So this is the perturbation. And give, this give this, uh, gives us the value of the um, uh, characteristic parameter eta. So this is exact value in this theory. And it corresponds to numerical, uh, to, to what uh, I can get numerical. Okay, so this picture is just the present uh, the shapes as described. So I start with the Tori, and then the Tori becomes, uh, well, more f f fighting. Uh, and then, so there, this the 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 channel that connects the internal volume with the outer volume uh, becomes smaller and smaller, and finally disappears. And uh, in the end, we come to hollow balls. What's interesting is if you look at the values of eta, you see that it's not uh, monotonic. I explain why a bit later. And this picture. It's the same picture. It's just I copied everything in one picture just to see the whole story in one uh, place. Okay, and this is the most practically important thing. So this uh, shows the uh, the branches of our solution <clears throat> and the conformational energy, normalized conformational energy. So what we have, this is it. What we have, so we start with steroids and uh, we follow these, um, again, we follow this uh, branch and come to uh, the maximum of eta. So we have no steroids beyond this value of eta. Well, approximately, I don't know the exact value. And then we still uh, on the steroidal branch and we go backwards. And then the steroids become uh, spheroids or discoids, biconcave discoids. Well, that's not precisely uh, placed the, the shape. They are somewhere here. And then uh, I go, uh, there is a connection with the uh, branch of hollow balls, which is the pink branch here. In the next slide, you will see details of how it occurs here. But what we see here, see that the uh, so if we ask about the um, lowest energy, then we uh, should say that, okay, so just on the steroids branch, and then there is critical 
and parameter of the eta where we have to switch to the whole of balls. All these exotic shapes, uh, they have a slightly higher energy. But of course, so uh, in this projection, these two um, branch, branches, they intersect, but they do not intersect. So we cannot, we, we have to jump here. Okay, so, um, so probably the, this, this um, uh, shape, this solution, the probably there um, uh, metast can be uh, considered as metastable solutions. Okay, now to better understand what's going on here. So we have the same actually a graph, but now I added the third dimension, the, um, some characteristic radius. Again, this is a shape of toroids. We start here and then this is maximal eta and then they go back and there is, sorry. And there is some loop here. This is the, the on the right hand side. So you see just the uh, zoomed area here, this area. So we are on toroids uh, coming from here. And then again, there is minimal eta and finally, uh, okay. So the, the uh, toroids become spheroids and the spheroids this branch go to hollow balls. So hollow balls and toroids, they, uh, well, they, are, they differ in, 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 this, in this parametric space. So they, they separate. Okay, now uh, what about the real sizes of all these beasts? So the, this uh, picture just shows the notation. So the inner uh, outer radius of uh, the uh, toroid, and uh, this uh, discoid or uh, spheroids, they are coded with three uh, radii. The radius of a inner ball, the top radius and uh, the outer, the maximal uh, radius of the outer surface. And then, uh, so here we uh, see all the radius. This is all, all these uh, curves present the radii. Uh, as function of the length of the molecule, not, not uh, <clears throat> the volume uh, one to the one third power, but um, uh, length. So normalized by A. A is the thickness. Okay, so, we're just using just two more minutes, if you can. Okay, this, <laughs> this, this is the ultimate slide. <clears throat> uh, so we have the outer uh, array of balls, this branch, and the this is the inner radius of the balls. And these loops are toroids, outer and inner radius. And they're here, so with some uh, loops, they're uh, connected with spheroids and come to uh, the two balls. So this, what we see here, basically. So the, the well, the, this is, so the the middle picture and the rightmost picture, they just uh, show the zoomed area, this and this. But what we see here, that the sizes of um, inner chamber uh, is more or less constant. That's important. Why? Because, so uh, I start with the end. So this interior current, it has almost a constant volume. So according to the theory, so it could be useful in, uh, for practice because it can, th this uh, condensate uh, can be used as a vehicle for drug delivery. Okay, summing up. I studied the morphological transformation of the thyroid into uh, discoid and further uh, into hollow sphere. This is more or less universal description, simple but universal parametric description of, of the shapes. And we see there is just uh, one family of the shapes and we see the uh, transformation, uh, which changes the topology of the condensate. Uh, so these exotic shapes, uh, discoids actually and spheroids, they are not energetically favorable, but still, so the difference of energy is small, so they can be metastable. Uh, of course, the 
neither coaxial or concentric spool model uh, not perfect. They are just approximations. So they're still not, uh, not clear what the exact path of DNA inside. But still, I think that it's interesting to have a more or less uh, universal simple description of these shapes. Uh, well, and what I plan in the future, uh, as already you can see, so uh, I show the picture of the uh, of this um, of that uh, DNA toroids inside the capsid. So the uh, to take an account the uh, interaction with the wall could be the next thing to do. Thank you for your attention. Great, thanks, Eugene. Questions. Eugene, it's it's Rob. Long time no see. I have a question for you though about the hollow balls one. So the, it, do I understand correctly that you imagine the entire hollow ball is somehow fibered by the or approximately fibered by this? Is I'm just wondering that what's going. The other characteristic isn't zero, so that's why I'm wondering how you what, what you do in the hollow ball, maybe near the poles of the hollow ball. Maybe I just haven't understood how, what the hollow ball represents with respect to the, the fibering by the, uh, or its approximate fibering by the, the, the DNA. Am I making any sense? I don't know if you understand my question. Okay, uh, I think I understand. So, um, <clears throat> hi, Rob. Um, th this, is, this is a concentric uh, spool model. So it means that I assume that, uh, in each um, elementary volume, I have the strand of double strand DNA that goes around the center exactly. So it, it's like you, you have a ball and starting going around it in all directions, trying to make more or less uh, constant density. Of course, this is idealization, but that, this is the model. I see. Did I answer the, the question? Yeah, no, I see. I see. Yeah. Well, maybe no, I just I I don't I don't see this as Greg, uh, by the way. Um, thank you, Eugene. Um, so do do you have a picture of the the texture of the uh, backbone in the hollow ball near the pole? Is it pointing along the pole? Uh, this part I, I couldn't I couldn't understand. I texture you mean uh, so you you'd like to see the the real um, strands yeah. around? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, 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 no. This no. This is look. So the the, the very theory is is uh, is continuous, continuum. So uh, so you you uh, must have some twist in your texture somehow. Is this is that well, you know? uh, well, for visualization properties, probably it could be done, but uh, frankly, I, I cannot see much sense in doing this uh, because this this is okay. So I just follow. The, the, this is not my invention. I mean, so I just follow the uh, Abing, uh, Adaik, and the other uh, Miller um, approach that uh, model. The this is like a liquid, so liquid crystal. So I, I, I model it as a um, continuum. You ever um, compute the characteristic parameter for a DNA page, say for a viral particle, yes. to see if you have evidence from more of the toroidal or more of the hollow ball organization inside? Sorry, what about characteristic parameter? Uh, there is the critical value of the characteristic parameter, and depending on which side you are, yeah. it is more favorable to have a hollow wall organization or a toroidal organization, right? So for a realistic virus situation, maybe phage lambda, as, as an example, or any phage you like, have you create computed this critical parameter to see what it prefers to do if it's confined in a volume? So what's the, on which side am I sitting as a phage? Typical phage. Uh, well, the typical viruses, they, they differ a lot, actually. They, they can be very different. Uh, I mean, but basically, 
but basically, okay, so I cannot say uh, I cannot uh, say much about viruses because as, as I mentioned um, in viruses, so what's important and the, the picture that uh, I showed here, um, yeah, this picture. So you see um, what is most important in viruses, this interaction with the walls, these proteins of the, uh, of the uh, capsid shell. So, uh, well, I have no uh, theory for this. I have to account for this. Uh, so this is my future probably work. So I cannot say much about the shape of the, uh, now, um, shape of the uh, thyroids inside the viruses. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, great. So great. And with that, thank you again for the talk.